Hello, I'm Tony Trongone, Superintendent of Pemberton Township Schools, and welcome to another edition of Inside Outlook. Today, I'll be talking to our Security Chief, Joe Bowen, who's going to talk about our latest security updates with an in-depth look at some specific new devices recently installed at our high school. Welcome, Joe. Good morning, sir. So, uh, big picture, there was a grant. There was. Uh, and a $1.2 million grant from the Board of uh, Chosen Freeholders from Burlington County? Correct. That was we, uh, given to us last fall. So we have a litany of things that were in that grant as far as uh, things that were installed or put into the high school uh, this current summer. Yeah, significant upgrades. We had an upgrade in uh, exterior lighting, a brand new PA system for inside and outside the building. We had uh, the addition of uh, strobe lighting to alert students and staff and visitors when there's a problem inside the building. We had uh, trash receptacles replaced so that we can see through them now as opposed to uh, closed containers. Um, complete upgrade on our camera system inside the building, outside the building, and in the parking lots. And the crown jewel of the project, which is what's behind me, the security vestibule at the high school. And so uh, this is new at the high school, but we have security vestibules in all our other schools, right? This Correct. was the last school that did not have one? This is the last building that didn't have a secured vestibule for staff, students, and visitors. All right, it's good to know, and thank you. Thank you for that, Joe. Sure. Uh, second question. There's certainly been a lot of work taking place over the summer, but as I said, uh, we're going to focus on one of the more unique items that were part of the grant, and that's the, the vape sensors that have been installed in the building? Vape detectors, yeah. They're, okay. uh, the product name is Halo. Okay. We are one of the very few school districts in this area that have uh, gone with using the Halos, and I think that it will be <clears throat> a growing trend as the, the vape issue continues uh, to grow. Okay. So with our students' overall well-being in mind, we now have vape detectors in every, in every laboratory, right? Every boys' and girls' laboratory. Every boys' room and girls' room and the bathrooms in the locker room as well. How do they work? So the vape detector is uh, it's a device that senses a change in chemical analysis in the air in that room. Uh, it doesn't record. It doesn't, there's no video, no audio. It simply detects a change in the chemistry in the air itself. So anytime that a student or a visitor or staff member, whoever, uh, may use a vape, vape, a vape uh, pen or a jewel in a bathroom, there's residue that comes out of that. And this detector, the sensor, senses that chemical in the air and sends an alert to both security and administration. Okay. And so as far as privacy? No impact whatsoever with privacy. Okay. And, and, and then also in, in regard to cameras in the hallway then, so is there a synchronization or an integration with cameras in the sensors? There is. There's a uh, part of the upgrade was not only uh, an upgrade in the cameras, but an upgrade in the video management system that we use. And the uh, vape detectors now interface with the camera system so that when the detector sends a signal that there's a problem in the bathroom that somebody's using a vape, uh, it automatically trains the nearest camera to the exterior of the bathroom, the, the entrance door in and out, and begins to record people coming and going from the bathroom. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty smart. But there's no, I mean, there's, there might be confusion. There are no cameras or recordings in the bathroom. Absolutely not. Okay, I just Absolutely want to make not. that clear to our public. Uh, I'd like to just go a little bit further, uh, Superintendent to discuss why. I mean, it, it's been all over the news. Um, it's been a national issue. The number of uh, teenagers who have, are now trying vapes and using vapes regularly, uh, statistics show that the number could be as high as 60% of all high school seniors have at one point in time tried to use a vape. Okay, and we're looking to expand this, but beyond the high school, correct? I budgeted enough um, to also do it in the middle school if we need to do that, because we have seen an uptick in the use of uh, vapes in the middle school as well. All right, good. Uh, third question. Uh, if a student is caught vaping on school premises, what are the consequences? Well, it's handled, uh, it's all in the student handbook, so parents can certainly take a look at the student handbook and to know what the uh, penalties will be. But it's handled the same as it would be handled if it were a, a tobacco product. So there is a suspension involved in the, in the situation, confiscation of whatever device or, or um, liquid that's used in the jewel or, or the vape. That's going to be confiscated and the, and the administration is going to handle it just as they would a cigarette product. So the teacher and me want to repeat it again. So we're following a, an existing policy? Correct. There is a district policy. It's, it's in the district uh, policy for parents and uh, staff and students to see. I, I remember saying e-cigarettes and jeweling and vaping is in there. Correct. 
so it's in there, so we don't have to in invent another policy. It's, yeah, it's, already, it's already in existence. And we've been following that, that, that policy for the last few years. But now the, the vape detectors give us a better uh, sense of monitoring the situation in our schools. Absolutely well. So in the past, normally what would happen is a, either um, a staff member walk past the bathroom and, and smell or see um, students in the bathroom vaping, and then there's a little bit of a lag, and then it's like trying to play catch up. In this situation, we'll, we'll know immediately okay. through the vape detector, and uh, we'll deal with it immediately. All right, great. Last question. So everything comes back to creating and maintaining a safe and healthy learning environment for our students and staff, and this is just one more way uh, your department is helping us to do that. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just want parents to know that we're not doing this to get kids in trouble. We're doing this because there is such a huge unknown with vapes and the byproduct of vapes and you know what's in the vaping device, what kind of liquid is in there. We can't, we can't do a chemical analysis. We have no idea. Parents would have no idea. You're essentially the student or, or person using the vape is relying on where they purchased it or who they purchased it from to know, to think that it's not harmful to them. And realistically speaking, studies are showing that we as a country, the medical field, we don't know what the long-term use of vapes, what effect it's gonna have. Uh, again, nationally speaking, there's been a lot of news lately with uh, a student from Texas who wound up in the ICU for 10 days with collapsed lungs from vaping. Uh, and not vaping tremendously uh, a lot, but just just in normal use. So we don't know what the long-term use is gonna, how it's gonna affect students' health. And, and so we're, we're trying to get in front of it. You know, we're gonna learn, we're gonna continue to learn, and we just wanna make sure that everybody in the building is safe and, and as, as uh, healthy as possible, if you will. Good. In regards well, to these I, I appreciate and admire your passion in this area for our, the well-being of our kids. And at my level, we've had conversations with other superintendents about treating this. And we, we, we say simply, it's not good for kids and it's illegal. So we have to enforce it in schools. It's, it's a black and white thing to me as far as it's laid out there. It's, it's not good, it's illegal. And, uh, and, and we look forward to those studies and making sure people understand the, the side effects or the after effects of use of vaping. And, and there is a, there's a, a side to the, to the debate where perhaps, you know, uh, it's considered an e-cigarette or a jewel is, is better than smoking a cigarette and really speaking we don't know you know okay. so that, that's that's a reach so until such studies have shown that perhaps there's less uh, concern than right now everybody thinks there is mm -hmm. we're going to handle it uh, with the students safety and health in mind all right thanks thank you Joe Certainly. and thank you for all your work and, and leadership in this area and also with uh, you know, our, our assistant superintendent, Ms. Gianetti, along with our uh, facilities director, Dean Adams. Uh, who else to help you in this, all the things that are going on, uh, Mr. It's Pinto? A, it's a team effort uh, yeah. from all across the board, from the, the maintenance folks, custodial staff, the leaders of those groups, Mr. Adams, Mr. Pinto, yourself, Ms. Gianetti. Uh, it's been a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, we're not done yet. We still have a little bit, a little bit to go. And I apologize that we didn't get it done before school started. We're gonna be about a week behind, but we'll get it done and, and uh, we're gonna be better for it. Good stuff, all right. So everything circles back to providing our students with a safe and orderly learning environment. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for your passion in this area. Sure. Uh, so you have anything you'd like to add? I just wanna remind uh, everyone that we don't know what harm these vapes can do. And until we know whether or not they are safe to use, I think we have to be careful with what we do and be mindful that uh, this can severely impact the student's health. And, for, and from my perspective, we have a policy. There are st existing state laws. We're gonna follow the existing policies and state laws. It's not good for kids and it's against the law. Correct. All right, anything else? I just wanna remind everyone that uh, it's important. It's a uh, tagline that you hear all the time, but if you see something that concerns you, make sure you say it, make sure you bring it up, whether it's in the building, outside the building, social media, um, we need to hear that. Uh, we need to hear if there's an issue that we're not aware of. All right. Mr. Bowen, thanks for joining us today. It's important information. I appreciate, again, appreciate your passion in this area. Oh, you're welcome, sir. All right. And that's our show for today. See you next time on Inside Outlook.